fellow Americans. Tonight, I speak to you from the East Room of the White House regarding one of the most profound responsibility of the President of the United States, and that is the selection of a Supreme Court Justice. I've often heard that, other than matters of war and peace, this is the most important decision a President will make. The Supreme Court is entrusted with the safeguarding of the crown jewel of our Republic, the Constitution of the United States. Twelve days ago, Justice Anthony Kennedy informed me of his decision to take senior status on the Supreme Court, opening a new vacancy. For more than four decades, Justice Kennedy served our nation with incredible passion and devotion. I'd like to thank Justice Kennedy for a lifetime of distinguished service. In a few moments, I will announce my selection for Justice Kennedy's replacement. This is the second time I have been faced with this task. Last year, I nominated Judge Neil Gorsuch to replace the late, great Justice Antonin Scalia. I chose Justice Gorsuch because I knew that he, just like Justice Scalia, would be a faithful servant of our Constitution. We are honored to be joined tonight by Justice Scalia's beloved wife, Maureen. Maureen. Thank you, Maureen. Both Justice Kennedy and Justice Scalia were appointed by a President who understood that the best defense of our liberty and a judicial branch, immune from political prejudice, were judges that apply the Constitution as written. That President happened to be Ronald Reagan. For this evening's announcement, we are joined by Ronald Reagan's Attorney General, Edwin Meese. Ed. And Ed, I speak for everyone. Thank you for everything you've done to protect our nation's great legal heritage. In keeping with President Reagan's legacy, I do not ask about a nominee's personal opinions. What matters is not a judge's political views, but whether they can set aside those views to do what the law and the Constitution require. I am pleased to say that I have found, without doubt, such a person. Tonight, it is my honor and privilege to announce that I will nominate Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court.
I know the people in this room very well. They do not stand and give applause like that very often. So they have some respect. And Brett's wife, Ashley, and their two daughters, Margaret and Eliza, have joined us on the podium. And thank you, and congratulations to you as a family. Thank you. Judge Kavanaugh has impeccable credentials, unsurpassed qualifications, and a proven commitment to equal justice under the law. A graduate of Yale College and Yale Law School, Judge Kavanaugh currently teaches at Harvard, Yale, and Georgetown. Throughout legal circles, he is considered a judge's judge, a true thought leader among his peers. He is a brilliant jurist, with a clear and effective writing style, universally regarded as one of the finest and sharpest legal minds of our time. And just like Justice Gorsuch, he excelled as a clerk for Justice Kennedy. That's great. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Judge Kavanaugh has devoted his life to public service. For the last 12 years, he has served as a judge on the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals with great distinction, authoring over 300 opinions which have been widely admired for their skill, insight, and rigorous adherence to the law. Among those opinions are more than a dozen that the Supreme Court has adopted as the law of the land. Beyond his great renown as a judge, he is active in his community. He coaches CYO basketball, serves meals to needy families, and having learned from his mom, who was a school teacher in D.C., tutors children at local elementary schools. There is no one in America more qualified for this position and no one more deserving. I want to thank the senators on both sides of the aisle, Republican and Democrat, for their consultation and advice during the selection process. This incredibly qualified nominee deserves a swift confirmation and robust bipartisan support. The rule of law is our nation's proud heritage. It is the cornerstone of our freedom. It is what guarantees equal justice. And the Senate now has the chance to protect this glorious heritage by sending Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. And now, Judge, the podium is yours. Mr. President, thank you. Throughout this process, I have witnessed firsthand your appreciation for the vital role of the American judiciary. No president has ever consulted more widely or talked with more people from more backgrounds to seek input about a Supreme Court nomination. Mr. President, I am grateful to you, and I'm humbled by your confidence in me. Thank you. Thirty years ago, President Reagan nominated Anthony Kennedy to the Supreme Court. The framers established that the Constitution is designed to secure the blessings of liberty. Justice Kennedy devoted his career to securing liberty. I am deeply honored to be nominated to fill his seat on the Supreme Court. My mom and dad are here. I am their only child. When people ask what it's like to be an only child, I say, it depends on who your parents are. <laughs> I was lucky. My mom was a teacher. 
In the 1960s and 70s, she taught history at two largely African-American public high schools in Washington, D.C., McKinley Tech and H.D. Woodson. Her example taught me the importance of equality for all Americans. My mom was a trailblazer. When I was 10, she went to law school and became a prosecutor. My introduction to law came at our dinner table when she practiced her closing arguments. Her trademark line was, use your common sense. What rings true, what rings false. That's good advice for a juror and for a son. One of the few women prosecutors at that time, she overcame barriers and became a trial judge. The president introduced me tonight as Judge Kavanaugh. But to me, that title will always belong to my mom. My dad went to law school at night while working full time. He has an unparalleled work ethic and has passed down to me his passion for playing and watching sports. I love him dearly. The motto of my Jesuit high school was men for others. I've tried to live that creed. I've spent my career in public service from the executive branch and the White House to the US Court of Appeals for the DC Circuit. I've served with 17 other judges, each of them a colleague and a friend. My judicial philosophy is straightforward. A judge must be independent and must interpret the law, not make the law. A judge must interpret statutes as written, and a judge must interpret the Constitution as written, informed by history and tradition and precedent. For the past 11 years, I've taught hundreds of students, primarily at Harvard Law School. I teach that the Constitution's separation of powers protects individual liberty. And I remain grateful to the dean who hired me, Justice Elena Kagan. As a judge, I hire four law clerks each year. I look for the best. My law clerks come from diverse backgrounds and points of view. I am proud that a majority of my law clerks have been women. I am part of the vibrant Catholic community in the DC area. The members of that community disagree about many things, but we are united by a commitment to serve. Father John Ensler is here. 40 years ago, I was an altar boy for Father John. These days, I help him serve meals to the homeless at Catholic Charities. I have two spirited daughters, Margaret and Liza. Margaret loves sports, and she loves to read. Liza loves sports, and she loves to talk. <laughs> I have tried to create bonds with my daughters like my dad created with me. For the past seven years, I have coached my daughter's basketball teams. The girls on the team call me Coach K. <laughs> I am proud of our Blessed Sacrament team that just won the city championship. My daughters and I also go to lots of games. Our favorite memory was going to the historic Notre Dame-UConn women's basketball game at this year's Final Four. Unforgettable. My wife, Ashley, is a West Texan, a graduate of Abilene Cooper Public High School and the University of Texas. She is now the town manager of our community. We met in 2001 when we both worked in the White House. Our first date was on September 10th, 2001. The next morning, I was a few steps behind her as the Secret Service shouted at all of us to sprint out the front gates of the White House because there was an inbound plane. In the difficult weeks that followed, 
Ashley was a source of strength for President Bush and for everyone in this building. Through bad days and so many better days since then, she has been a great wife and an inspiring mom. I thank God every day for my family. Tomorrow, I begin meeting with members of the Senate, which plays an essential role in this process. I will tell each senator that I revere the Constitution. I believe that an independent judiciary is the crown jewel of our constitutional republic. If confirmed by the Senate, I will keep an open mind in every case, and I will always strive to preserve the Constitution of the United States and the American rule of law. Thank you, Mr. President. You guys want to get a? You guys want any guests? I've got senators. Hey everybody! It looks like we're in for a good fight, and I hope you will join me in this enormously important struggle, uh, which has everything to do with justice and everything to do with the future of our country. As all of you, I expect, know. Uh, the president has just, just nominated Judge Kavanaugh uh, to be his uh, nominee for a position on the United States Supreme Court. And if, in fact, Kavanaugh is seated, uh, and we're going to do everything we can to prevent that from happening, uh, what you're going to see is major changes uh, in policy in almost every area of American life. Uh, if you are a woman, or if you are an American who believes who has the right to control her own body, and if you are one of the 70% of the American people who think that Roe v. Wade is a policy and a decision that should be maintained, worry about Judge Kavanaugh. You may recall that during the presidential campaign, uh, Donald Trump said, that he would only nominate uh, people to the Supreme Court who are prepared to overturn Roe v. Wade. Well, I don't believe a lot of what Trump says. Much of what he says are lies. But I happen to believe that on this one, he is telling the truth. So if we believe that a woman has the right to control her own body and not the United States government, we should be very worried about this nomination. If we believe that there is something fundamentally wrong in the Supreme Court decision on, uh, on campaign finance, uh, which allows billionaires in Citizens United to spend as much money as they want to buy candidates, be worried about this decision. Because many of us who are fighting for campaign finance reform are going to have to run up against the Supreme Court if you are worried about workers' rights and justice at the workplace and not having employers have all of the power, then worry about Judge Kavanaugh. 
if you're worried about climate change and the need to stand up to the fossil fuel industry and the need to protect our environment, worry about Judge Kavanaugh. If you are worried about civil liberties and privacy rights, if you think that it's somewhat absurd that we have had a Supreme Court says that people, billionaires, have the freedom to spend as much money as they want to buy elections, but we don't have the right to control our own privacy and keep people from stealing our information about our lives, worry about Judge Kavanaugh. Bottom line is, this is a very, very big deal. You got a 5-4 conservative bent right now on the Supreme Court. This guy will harden that 5-4 vote, make it even worse. Now, I'm not going to kid you. This is a very difficult fight that we're in. You all know that Republicans have 51 votes. A Democratic caucus has 49. In other words, in order to defeat this nomination, we're going to have to hang on to every vote in the Democratic caucus, and we need to get two Republican votes. Can we do it? Yeah, I think we can. I really do. Because I think the American people on all of these issues, whether it is 70% opposition to overturning Roe versus Wade, whether it's workers' rights, whether it's environmental protection, whether it's consumer rights, the American people are on our side. But we're not going to win this unless we rally the American people state by state and force those people who are inclined to vote for Judge Kavanaugh, force them to make a very, very difficult decision. So we can win this, but it ain't going to be easy, and we need people to stand up and start fighting back. Lori, do we got any questions? Sure. So David wants to know what this means for programs that help low-income people. It will be devastating. You know, we have a Congress right now uh, who wants to give, who has given, tax breaks to billionaires, wants to make massive cuts uh, to food stamps, to education, uh, to health care benefits, uh, and they will be passing laws to try to do that. And uh, what we will have is a Supreme Court, if Kavanaugh is in fact appointed, who will support those terrible, terrible uh, decisions. Any other questions out there? Sure. Gene wants to know how the American people can help fight. All right. We can win this thing, and it is not going to be easy. First of all, uh, we've got to do our best to make sure that every member of the Democratic Caucus, 49 people, stands with us. And you know what? The truth is, when we explain to the American people what this is about, Roe versus Wade, workers' rights, pre-existing conditions will come before the Supreme Court. The American people overwhelmingly do not believe that somebody with diabetes or heart disease or cancer should be denied insurance coverage or have to pay so much that he or she could not afford it. That's not what the American people believe. But it is altogether likely that Judge Kavanaugh will side with four other uh, conservative justices and allowing that to happen. So this is a very important uh, decision uh, in that regard. So we have Faye who says, as a woman, I am terrified. And we are getting a lot of other questions from women who are concerned about what this means for them. Well, what it means, look, let me repeat. Uh, I think Donald Trump is a pathological liar, and I believe very little of what he says. But on this issue, I think he is probably telling the truth. When he ran for president, you will all remember, he said, I will only appoint nominees who are prepared to vote to overturn Roe versus Wade. That's what he said, and I believe that is what this nomination is all about. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is that in recent polls, some 70% of the American people do not believe we should overturn Roe v. Wade. They don't believe the insane proposition that a billionaire has the freedom to spend as much money as he wants to buy an election, but a woman does not have the freedom to protect and control her own body. That's not what the American people believe. And I think the Supreme Court has got it absolutely backwards. So be nervous, be absolutely nervous about this. We are fighting right now to make sure that Roe v. Wade uh, is not overturned and that women can continue to control their own bodies. 
So we've, as we've seen in the past, there have been a lot of nominees who have refused to sort of say any of their personal views during confirmation right. hearings. So uh, Adam wants to know what you will be focusing on during the confirmation process. Uh, let me be, my view may be a little bit different than others on this. I do not put as much stake as others do in these committee hearings because I think these guys will say whatever has to be said. And what they will say, my guess is, they will not be pinned down. Mr. Capitol will not be pinned down and say, well, Hey, count me in. I'm going to overturn Roe v. Wade. He will not say that unless I am very, very mistaken. He will talk about, well, I can't really talk about it, this, that, and the other thing. He will beat around the bush. He will not be clear. Uh, at the end of the day, we have to assume that on Roe v. Wade and on other issues, uh, Trump has made a 100% political choice uh, that this guy will be part of the extreme right wing uh, on the court. And our job right now is to rally the American people. It will be a difficult fight. I don't want to make anyone think that this is going to be, stopping this nomination is going to be easy. It will not be easy. But there are Republican senators all over this country who are not going to be very comfortable or happy having to defend a decision in which they appoint a justice who will be working in absolute opposition to what the American people want, whether it is women's health, whether it's health care and pre-existing conditions, whether it is campaign finance reform and Citizens United. Uh, this is not, you know, if you're a Republican out there, it's not all that comfortable. And our job is to build that pressure, to make it so that after a lot of thought, some of these Republicans can say, you know what, this is not a good vote. I'm going to vote no. Maybe one more year. Okay, so it's, uh, we have a lot of people asking if there's any hope. And the answer is honestly there is, okay? I am not going to kid anybody and tell you that this struggle is not going to be a very, very difficult one. It will be. They have the votes. Our job is to make sure that every member of the Democratic caucus stays with us on this and to get a couple of Republicans. Can we do that? We can. If you are a Republican senator in a state where your voters support a woman's right to choose, you know what? You can say whatever you want to say. You're going to be uncomfortable about having to vote for this justice. Our job is to make it clear to every person in that state what is at stake here. What are the implications of this Supreme Court nominee and a hard five to four right wing control uh, over the United States Supreme Court? So it is not going to be easy. I can tell you I will be traveling around this country uh, doing everything that I can to rally the American people and force uh, senators to explain to their constituents why they think this is a uh, this nominee is a good choice. And I think some of them are going to be very reluctant to do that. So to answer that question, it will be a tough fight. I am not kidding anybody. I think we start off as the underdog in this. But if the question is, do I think we can win it? Yeah, I do think so. It's going to take a lot of hard work, a lot of grassroots organizing, a lot of mobilization, but I think we can. So, uh, let me just conclude by saying what I think everybody knows. This is a very, very big deal. Uh, if Kavanaugh is in fact appointed, he will have a hard right majority uh, in the United States Supreme Court uh, and a majority that might last for a number of years and be in a position to do absolutely horrendous damage to this country. So we're in the fight of our lives here. Let's stand up, let's do everything that we can. And I think if we are smart, if we work hard, I think we can stop this. Look forward to working with you all. Thank you. If you enjoyed this production by The State of Opportunity, please like and subscribe. Remember, you're the ones who make this all possible. You can also check out our Facebook page, at Opportunity State, and follow us on Twitter, at Of By Opportunity. If you feel like chipping in a couple bucks, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash stateofopportunity. Have a great day, and remember to always keep an open mind.